It's January 1999, NVIDIA had just IPO'd at $600 million and the stock price is just 40 cents after the stock split. Fast forward to June 6, 2024, NVIDIA has just hit $3 trillion market cap and become one of the only three companies in this entire world behind just Apple and Microsoft to ever reach that number. It's a remarkable story of a company that went from near bankruptcy back in 1997 to world domination in less than three decades. But how did a company that started in 1993 to improve the video games graphics end up becoming one of the most valuable company in the 21st century? Well, this is a story of dinosaurs, greed, generosity, controversy, technological advancements, and a legendary leather jacket. So the story starts in 1993 in Hollywood, LA. The first Jurassic Park movie was released that went on to earn more than a billion dollars. The reason for this success was graphics. Yeah, you heard it correct, graphics. In 1993, there were several CGI created movies, but no one had done anything to make dinosaurs or other objects feel real to the audience. Right after that, suddenly the demand for 3D graphics started to increase in the market to make dinosaurs and other objects appear more realistic in the movies. On the other side of California in East San Jose, three friends meet at a local Denny's. They were Jensen Huang, Chris Melachowski, and Curtis Priam. Jensen was Taiwanese-American electrical engineer, having previously worked at LSI Logics and AMD. Chris Malachowski and Curtis Priam came from HP and IBM. They had both worked together at Sun Microsystems as well. The three of them strongly believed that CPU could run the program to some extent, but in order to run a heavier application, accelerated computing would be required. After seeing the demand in CGI movies and 3D graphics in games, they became certain of their idea of accelerated computing and they also felt the time to do it is now. When NVIDIA was incorporated, they needed a lot of capital to start manufacturing. They faced some tough challenges from the traditional VCs in raising venture capital. Back then, VCs industry was relying heavily on relationships. It still is today to some extent, but not as much. Jensen Huang secured $20 million from Sequoia Capital and Sutter Hill Ventures thanks to his previous relationships with LSI Logics' CEO, who was also a Sequoia-backed founder. But the question is, why so many VCs rejected them? To put things in perspective, at that time, more than 89 companies were working on GPU manufacturing and only two of them survived. One is NVIDIA and the other is AMD. So the risk to reward ratio was pretty small and did not make any sense to VCs. After securing the capital from Sequoia, NVIDIA began the operations. A year later, NVIDIA hit the first major breakthrough when NVIDIA developed the NV1 graphics chip. They also secured a contract with Sega at that point in time. But the problem with NVIDIA NV1 chip was it was a jack of all trade. That means you could just use it in the PCs and play the Sega games natively. The problem was that Sega did not like their choice of using quadrangle-based image rendering architecture because most of the developers at that point in time were not accustomed to this technology. To make the matters worse, Microsoft, which is the direct competitor of NVIDIA at that point, had just released DirectX 3D, which was an API-based system to help render the graphics, and of course, it was incompatible with NVIDIA. NVIDIA's NV1 was incompatible for the most games. This led NVIDIA's biggest partner at that point, Diamond Multimedia, to return the 250,000 NV1 chip that they had purchased, and the reason was lack of support and poor sales. NVIDIA had to let go of the 50% of the employees. Only 40 out of 80 people stayed in NVIDIA. The loss was so big that NVIDIA was nearly bankrupted. In desperate times, Jensen Huang had to make a desperate call. And he did make the desperate call to Sega CEO. He also realized that NV2 chip that NVIDIA was working on was based on the same quadrangle approach of architecture that Sega had just rejected. Jensen asked for a very simple thing. He asked Sega's CEO to be released from the contract, but to be paid in full. Otherwise, NVIDIA will go just bankrupt. In the events of unprecedented generosity, Sega's CEO accepted the request, and that gave NVIDIA a lifeline. A lifeline that would prove so vital in NVIDIA's today's success. But apart from just the lifeline, Jensen and the team, they had learned a great lesson as well. And that lesson was that market is everything. Your market is crucial in success, regardless of the product, 
regardless of the industry, a lesson worth more than $10 million for them. And that lesson sit at the core of NVIDIA's rise and success as they moved and pivoted immediately to the PC industry. In 1999, computer revolution was booming and NVIDIA hit a home run with their first ever graphics card, GeForce 256. This was the first of its kind, a programmable graphics card. This is also known as GPU, the graphics processing unit. GeForce 256, the world's first GeForce. Look how cute GeForce 256 is. At the time, so you know, at the time, it was the single largest chip ever built. It was bigger than a CPU. And people were shocked that we built something that big. And they were even more shocked that we could sell something that big. GeForce 256 was such a huge success that NVIDIA went public in the same year. And it was IPO'd at $600 million and they had survived the dot-com bubble. Technologically, it was a very innovative product at that point in time. GeForce 256 allowed you to change and modify lights, colors, texture of sands, shadows, and contrast in the games that was not heard or experienced before. A year later, Microsoft had realized that the gaming industry is booming and they wanted to launch a new product, which is called Xbox. Great device was here. Uh, this is the Xbox. And so, uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. Microsoft was looking for a GPU partner, and of course, NVIDIA was the right choice at that point in time. Microsoft had paid NVIDIA $200 million in advance for their GPUs to be installed in Xbox. That deal was way better. Xbox was launched in 2001 with a custom NVIDIA's NV1A chip. Later on, Sony, Apple, Dell, HP, all of them were using NVIDIA's chips and GPUs. The stock price kept rising and NVIDIA continued to hit milestones after milestones. Earlier this year at GTC 2024, Jason Huang showcased NVIDIA's new Blackwell platform and NVLink switch, which is a processor for generative AI era. It felt exactly how Steve Jobs introduced us to iPhone, an era-defining future tech. In Jensen Huang's word, every company in the world is now preparing for Blackwell. Blackwell is not a chip. Blackwell is the name of a platform. Uh, people think we make GPUs, and, and we do, but GPUs don't look the way they used to. This is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. But this all started way back in 2006 when NVIDIA shifted their focus from gaming and graphic cards and they realized that GPUs and parallel processing could be used for so much more than just playing better video games. So NVIDIA had developed CUDA technology which improved the processing capabilities of its graphic cards by 3.6 times. NVIDIA had realized the power of AI when they were developing the CUDA technology. Many things that are possible now are all thanks to CUDA, including high quality architects, visualization, 3D graphics, 3D art, and editing. With CUDA, it became much more easier to write programs that run on GPUs using the standard languages like C, C++, and Java. And thanks to all of that, a lot many applications could use parallel processing than just the games. It had opened up the possibilities for all sectors that required dealing with huge amount of data. Data centers like AWS, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Netflix have all adapted GPUs for various applications like video streaming, web searches, and real-time acceleration came about with the AI. NVIDIA anticipated the AI revolution almost two decades ago. The dream is now coming to reality. It's an overnight success that was 20 years in making. With Blackwell leading the entire world of generative AI, the future of robotics is within the reach. Robotics will soon dominate various industries because it's way more safer and it's way more efficient. The automotive sector is set for a big, big change. This year, NVIDIA will team up with Mercedes and JLR to integrate their advanced technologies. Jensen Huang announced that BYD, the world's largest electric vehicle company, will also adopt NVIDIA's latest innovation. Thor is a next-gen AV computer designed for transformer engines that will drive the future of robotics and potentially leading to the future of humanoid robots. Among all the interesting things that Jensen Huang has showcased at GTC 2024, NVIDIA has also launched Project Groot, which is a groundbreaking initiative in human robotics. The project pushes the boundaries for robot learnings and trainings.
about the same size. Project Groot offered a foundational model capable of processing multi-model instructions and past interactions. It also enables humanoid robots to autonomously determine their next action, bridging the gap between human interaction and robotic execution. At the core of Project Groot, there is Isaac Lab, which is a specialized learning application using NVIDIA's Omniverse. This virtual training ground allows robots to refine their skills and adapt to real-world scenarios. Complementing Isaac Lab is Osmo, a computer orchestration service that coordinates workflow across NVIDIA's DGX and OBX systems, ensuring efficient training and simulations. One of my favorite Project Groot's key feature is its, its ability to learn from human with minimal demonstrations. By analyzing a few human interactions, robots equipped with Project Groot can assist with everyday tasks and mimic human movements accurately. This is made possible by NVIDIA's advanced neural network that understands human behavior and translate it into instruction for robots. As humanoid robotics evolve, Project Groot stands at the forefront of innovation, paving the way for a new wave of AI-powered robotics. With NVIDIA's commitment to excellence, the possibilities for humanoid robots are endless, promising a future where robots seamlessly integrate into our daily lives, revolutionizing the industries and reshaping our interaction with technology. Jensen Huang is the only CEO of NVIDIA. Over 30 years of leadership has been both celebrated and criticized. One of the biggest criticisms that he's drawn is his pursuit of profit. Huang's management style has also sparked controversy in the post-COVID era when the miners were using NVIDIA's GPU for Bitcoin mining. After being fined by the SEC for the lack of transparency, many investors also felt misled. The gaming community has also voiced concerns about the high prices of NVIDIA's graphics card, especially compared to the competitors like AMD. In 2022, NVIDIA's fallout with EVGA, a key partner, highlighted their business ethics issues. And I'm also happy to very publicly point out that NVIDIA has been one of the worst trouble spots we've had with hardware manufacturers. And that is really sad because NVIDIA tries to sell chips a lot of chips into the Android market and NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So NVIDIA, fuck you. EVGA's CEO cited unsatisfactory communication about pricing strategies as the reason for severing ties with NVIDIA. Such controversies challenge the integrity of Wong's profit-driven approach. Despite these challenges, NVIDIA has seen massive growth. The share price had increased more than 200% last year with a 26% revenue growth. Opinions on NVIDIA's future are split. Some believe AI will continue to be a massive industry with NVIDIA at the forefront. Others think that growth is unsustainable with competitors like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and AMD gaining more grounds. Additionally, NVIDIA's reliance on Taiwan-based TSMC for semiconductor production faces risk due to China's military pressure on Taiwan. Jensen Huang recently reflected on his journey, stated that if he were given a chance to start over again, he would not. The struggles, uncertainties, and pressure of building a $3 trillion company were immense. He stated that starting and running NVIDIA was far more challenging than he had ever anticipated. He expressed that nobody in their right mind would want to endure the pressure he experienced. NVIDIA is doing what Apple had done with the iPhone, providing a platform for companies to build on top of. With Blackwell platform and their innovative GPUs, they will not only create more opportunities for other companies, but will also steam past Microsoft very soon. Do you think Nvidia will rule the world, or do you believe competitors like AMD, Intel, Microsoft will keep Nvidia at bay? Let us know in the comment below, and thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon in the next one. Peace.